Good evening and welcome to tonight's uh, regular scheduled meeting of the Board of Education, our only meeting in July. I'll remind everybody historically this was our organizational meeting in the past and why we have one meeting in July. Uh, now with the November elections of school board members and terms starting January 1st, we do our organization meetings in January. So this is a, uh, a typical Board of Education meeting tonight. So with that, before we begin, if everybody would stand and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And uh, I ask everybody to turn off their cell phones and then uh, ask the secretary to take the roll. President Wasserman. Here. Vice President Baker. Vice absent. Secretary Kaminsky, myself, is here. Secretary Grandstand. Here. Member Gorton. Here. Member McFarland. Here. Member Mandel. Here. here. Thank you, and I do know uh, Ms. Baker, for the rest of the board's information, is attending a funeral this evening. So our sympathies are with her. Um, with that, we'll move into the consent agenda. Uh, the items on the agenda, consent agenda are the approval of the board meetings from the last board meeting, adoption of school code articles as listed in the, in the agenda. Uh, bids were recently received from tree service vendors, uh, so acceptance of bids for uh, tree service. Also for custodial supply vendors on garbage liners for our district facilities. Uh, approval for a 12-month extension of a two-year contract with the public services of waste and recycling services for next school year. It's a $36,000 item. And approval is requested under a 12-month extension of a two-year contract with Schindler Elevator uh, for uh, elevator inspections for the year, and that is a $3,000 item. Uh, we also have a teacher resignation and $2,300 worth of through law firm bills to approve. With that, I'd accept a motion. We can go in discussion about elimination or addition of items. I will move to approve consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.8 as read. Support. Moved by Member McFarland and support by Treasurer Branstad. Any uh, discussion on the items or additions of deletions anybody would prefer to see? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. All in favor say aye. <coughs> aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. At this point, we'll move into the point of the agenda uh, for requests to address the board. We have no formal request. Does anybody wish to address the board this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to Board of Education matters and presentation of the board. Um, I'll hand it over to Mike. And when I do, Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I should have started that. Uh, this is Mike's very first board meeting. Uh, and we have some things for action here that he'll describe to us briefly, and then we'll just go through them. You caught me a little bit off guard on that one. I wasn't I'm sorry. sure that was my role or, or, or not on, on the board meeting. So um, let me get caught back up, and we will do that because I am going to find the action items on here real quick. Well, the first item is the Michigan Association of School Board. It's uh, delegate and alternate. That one you've done multiple times, I'm sure, and yep. so uh, we have to send our representatives there. And I think Jerry previously talked to a few board members if they were interested in repeating again. So, yep. And uh, I'd asked uh, the Secretary Kaminsky if he'd serve as delegate, and Lynn is alternate. And uh, yep. so, if you still are willing to accept that, John, absolutely. Okay, I would accept a motion for 4.1. I move we accept John Kaminsky as the delegate and Lynn Baker as the alternate. Support. <coughs> Moved by Treasurer Branch, support by um, member, member Gorton. Um, any discussion or questions? Seeing none, moving to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Opposed? Quiet. The ayes have it. <laughs> Michigan High School Athletic Association, I'm sure you've done that one every year as well. And we really only have one association to be membership of. And for the most part, they do a pretty good job. So we make the recommendation to approve that. Okay. So we have a resolution. Yes, we have a resolution. Uh, somebody's got to move and second sure. the motion first. Uh, anybody want to move? Yeah, I'll move that we approve 4.2. Support. Member McFarland moves and supported by Treasurer Branstadt and uh, Secretary Kaminsky, if you'll read the resolution. Gladly. Um, we have here a membership resolution for the year August 1st, 2013 through July 31st, 2014. The listed Jefferson Middle School. Northeast Middle School, Midland High School, Hubert, Herbert Henry Dow High School, secondary schools which are under the direction of the Board of Education, 
uh, slash governing body. School District of Mid Midland, City of Midland, County of Midland of State of Michigan are hereby A, enrolled as members of the Midland Michigan High School Athletic Association, Inc., a nonprofit association, and B, are further enrolled to participate in the approved inner schools athletic activities sponsored by the said association. The Board of Education slash governing body hereby delegates to the superintendent or his or her de designee the responsibility for the supervision and control of said activities and hereby accepts the constitution and bylaws of said association and adopts its own rules, regulations, and interpretations as minimum standards as published in the current handbook as the governing code under which the said school or school shall conduct its program of interscholastic athletics and agrees to primary enforcement of said rules, regulations, interpretations, and qualifications. In addition, it is hereby agreed that schools which host or participate in the association's meets and tournaments shall follow and enforce all tournament policies, procedures, and schedules. This authorization shall be effective from August 1st, 2013 and shall remain effective until July 31st, 2014, during which the authorization may not be re revoked. Uh, record of adoption, um, the above resolution was adopted by the Board of Education slash governing body of the Midland Public Schools on this uh, 15th day of July, A.D., 2013, and is so recorded in the minutes of, of the meeting of the said, bo uh, said board slash governing body. That's a lot. <laughs> Yeah. So read. Um, any discussion, questions, or comments before we move into a vote, which will be a roll call vote? See none. Mr. Secretary, can you take a roll call vote on the resolution? <coughs> Absolutely. President Wasserman? Yes. Vice President Baker? Absent. Secretary Kaminsky, myself, yes. Treasurer Brandstamp? Yes. Member Gordon? Yes. Member McFarland? Yes. Member Vanderkill? Yes. We have a 6 0 vote. So approved. Moving on to the next item, the agenda, we're going to turn this over to Mr. Verlindi on uh, cloud computing policies. Yes, this is uh, an update to our acceptable use policy, which we've had uh, since we've had technology in uh, the district. And as you are well aware, technology changes. And as you're well aware, we're uh, trying out um, some different types of technologies in different contexts with our iPad uh, Action Research Initiative. We're going to try to uh, expand a bit that uh, footprint into the secondaries this coming year. Um, we've learned a lot uh, in the past here. We also, from a marketing standpoint, looking at uh, using things such as Twitter or Facebook. Um, but the problem is that our acceptable use policy as we move into these areas and uh, try to use them for instructional purposes is in many ways our acceptable use policy doesn't even recognize some of them, such as social media, cloud computing, etc. And we'd like to uh, uh, try some of that for instructional use, especially at the secondary now that we're going to have some shared um, devices um, as opposed to one-on-one -on -one, uh, to uh, get some more action research. We'd like to look at uh, offering possibilities for cloud storage off of those devices to some of our secondary students so if they're sharing it, they can keep the data that they created in that particular day. The point of an acceptable use policy uh, with the board is simply to define well, what technology can be used in the instructional setting and how it is to be used, how it's to be used responsibly. And in some cases that requires for instructional purposes and limited purposes um, with approval of a, a building principal. As we move forward, it's not going to be everybody's using everything all the time. Um, and it's going to be with an instructional purpose and we want to guard against any um, abuse of this and what those penalties could be if somebody ab abuses it. So this is not really a more limiting policy. It is actually an updated policy that gives more options going forward and has some clarity as to what are the user's responsibilities and what the user's rights are um, in that context. So I've uh, provided with you and I'd like to point out that Mr. Sabrin and Mr. Sobel are here and we're part of um, uh, spending hours going through this policy to make sure that it meets our needs. We provide you with a copy that shows the changes that are made. I think you'll find it's in the spirit of what I just described. And we're just bringing this for information now so that you have a chance to further digest it. If anybody in the public wants to see a copy of that, we'd be more than happy to provide that for them to look at. And then we would anticipate bringing this back at the first meeting in August and then uh, work towards distributing this information to all our staff and our students. 
any questions to Gary at this point? Uh, I noticed that we were able to uh, have student data in the cloud now. In, in some if it's in, in, encrypted? Y yes. Okay, I, I, I don't understand the question. Well, over the last six months, I've wanted us to move to the cloud, and there's been an argument that we wouldn't be able to put student information in the cloud. So this pretty much opens us up to be able to have everything in the cloud. This isn't student data. Uh, that we're talking about necessarily, like mm -hmm. uh, test scores, et cetera. We're talking about um, student being able to have, a secondary student, for example, being able to have uh, a Dropbox uh, app, which uh, the, the, data that the data, in this case I'm referring to, the work that they had accumulated or done that day can be stored in their own personal folder uh, so that when they go to a different device, they can pull that down. But no, uh, we're very um, careful about all the student data that we would have on our servers. This is to give um, access to documents. Uh, to student the work. Yeah. But as I was reading through it, it said that um, specifically that you could have student information in the cloud if it was encrypted. If we wanted to do that, Blake, why don't you come up to the podium? The intent of opening up the cloud as an option for uh, storing data in the cloud as opposed to on our own servers is to give not only students but staff an opportunity to offload some of that information um, in, in a way that they haven't been able to do in the past because we haven't had those policies. And what we're talking about is things like lesson plans and homework assignments and things that students have created in labs or on uh, mobile devices where it's local to that device and we want to give them a way to back that information up or to share that information out with others. And it, it's not as much, as a matter of fact, the policy changes clearly state we're not to be storing personal identifiable information in the cloud. And that whether you're a student or a staff member, that you're to uh, adhere to FERPA and HIPAA uh, and, and those rules as they currently exist, those laws. Oh, so that unless it's encrypted not, and we don't have that uh, ability then? Is that's that what not you're currently telling included me? in this particular policy. Hmm. I read it today and I printed it off, but I did not bring it thinking you'd have a copy of it. But if we are able to store in the cloud, according to Saline Area Schools, you know, it's about a half million dollar a year savings. So I really would like to look into that further and how we can encrypt that information. Well, we are, uh, I'll tell you that we are exploring uh, Office 365 right. as an option for doing that, th those types of things. It would be free. It would not replace any of our existing um, Microsoft Office products. It's a complement to it. And one of the advantages of uh, that possibility is not only is it free, but we would have the ability to monitor and go into that data, which is not available on uh, Google Apps at, at currently, unless you pay for it. And then it's a, a big price. And, and I'd like to remind the public, I think, Blake, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, our assessments of what that would save us is nowhere near the $500,000, correct? That is correct. Well, okay. part of the problem was we couldn't put it all in the cloud according to previous administration. Well, if saline say 500, that's one thing. No, they say 400,000. They oh. estimated that we would save 500,000. And our guys know our district. So I just want the public to be clear that our assessment did not save $500,000. Correct. That, uh, so. Okay, so uh, reread the policy. Gary, I had a couple questions and some I fed you beforehand. Um, we have cyber bullying policies in our bullying policy. That's I did not question. notice that in question. this policy. We have a separate policy for the bullying. And yeah, exactly. Cyber so it doesn't have to be redone into the other policy either because right. the one would be enough. Okay, so that's what I want to make sure of. I did have a question. With the, uh, with the, the policy that, that was at least given in the board packet is that although in some cases, we may provide a device in case with the, the pilot program. We still have a right, if it's not used properly, to pull that device or restrict it. Yes, there is a the section here that talks about um, violation of the policy and what the potential consequences could be. OK, OK, very good. I'm good. Any other questions? OK, we'll move on. Uh, moving into finance, I'll turn it over to Ms. Klein. Yes. 
I'm bringing a recommendation this evening to increase our breakfast and lunch prices for 2013-14. I know it feels like we just barely finished 12-13, uh, but food service is very anxious to get the prices established because they need to begin printing the free and reduced lunch applications so that all those arrangements can be in place before school begins. This will be our first price increase since the 2011-12 school year, and it was a recommendation at Chartwell's that we increase our prices to offset the increased food costs that are in part a result of the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act and in part just general increasing costs for food. Uh, we had discussed this at the Finance Facilities and Operations Committee meeting and the recommendation at that time from Chartwells was a 25 cent per meal increase. After looking at other districts and where we would be relative to them, we found that although we wouldn't be the highest, we would be at the high end. Uh, there are some districts higher, some lower. Some we talked to were in the process of adjusting their own prices, so they couldn't tell us for certain what they would be. Uh, but we felt that 15 cents per meal for the elementary and secondary lunches would be reasonable. So that would leave us with a price for an elementary school lunch at $2.30 and the base secondary lunch $2.50. Breakfast and the adult meals would also increase 15 cents, and the reduced lunch prices remain at 40 cents, which is an amount that's established by federal law. So we would request your action on that. And just a uh, reminder, uh, this is a final year of our contract with Chartwell, so we will be rebidding in the fall, and this is the time uh, when we rebid that we will be able to, if we want to add additional services such as meals outside of the school day, we have to incorporate those into the bid if we anticipate wanting to do that. And so as we move forward, I think that'll probably be part of our plan. Nothing to do with this evening, but just as a reminder, because we will be talking more about food service in the months ahead. And I'll accept a motion and we can ask questions of Linda. Now, is this because this says for this information? This says, it, she just said for action. So I'm yes. assuming it's for action. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Move approval of uh, item for action, uh, agenda item 5.1. So, oh, please. Support. <laughs> Move by Secretary Kaminsky and support by, as per the evening has gone, by Treasurer Branstadt. Uh, questions for Linda on this? Yeah, I, I did have a question with the, with the federal policy that if they change the ingredients and what you, what the requirements, nutritional requirements, and that kind of drives the cost. And yes, uh, at the end of 2011, uh, 2010 or 2011, there's a pretty significant overhaul in the federal laws regarding nutrition standards, and it's been a very lengthy process. So originally, things were rolled out like the availability of water during meals. And then the nutritional standards were changed, what can and cannot be part of a meal, uh, what the portion sizes are going to be. It's created really quite a bit of a, a firestorm across the United States. You'll see news reports pro and con. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, it's not germane to this evening, but something to be aware of. This spring we had talked about the competitive food standards and in fact had modified our own district policy to make sure that we were in alignment with the law as it stood at that time. Uh, just within about the last three weeks, the federal government has released what they believe to be the final guidelines. I, they're called the interim, but they're the interim final guidelines. And they won't go into effect until the 14-15 school year but I suspect that we'll have to revisit our own district policy again regarding competitive foods and the foods that may be available. Uh, they're very careful to say that this does not affect the food that the children bring to school, including for things like birthday snacks, uh, but very stringent guidelines regarding what we may sell in the school store as well as for fundraising. So just something to be aware of and sort of a long answer to your question, Dr. Sure, Kaminsky, sure. but yeah. yes, there have been major changes that have affected every aspect of the food mm -hmm. service program. And, and although we're considering this for the 13-14 year, there was no increase from last year? No. To make no, it's been two years. Yes, and mm -hmm. food prices are going up. Yeah, I think we, we had discussed in our finance very high. Yep. meeting how much we've all noticed food prices going up, so this to go up 15 cents per meal seems very reasonable. And, and Linda, does the 15 cent a meal keep us self-funded yet? 
that we're not coming out of general budget to pay for mm -hmm. food service at 15? We'll see. It's going to be very tight. Depend on usage. usage, because one of the things that happened with the new meal patterns is not just in Midland, but across the country, participation in the food service program tended to drop off. Yeah, a lot of fixed costs there. Okay. So we have a motion. Any other questions or comment? See none. We'll move into a vote. We'll just do a voice vote on this. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. The ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, the agenda will show correspondence to and from the board um, and a FOIA request from Mackinac Center listing of our future meetings are all regular meetings so far um, and now we'll have study discussion session Mike our history is that it finishes with you for comment so um, so we'll begin with I'll begin with Kim we'll work our way around and then come to you okay. well, I'm just I want to welcome you to Midland Public Schools very excited for you to be here and that's what I wanted to say too. Welcome to Midland. Welcome to Midland Public Schools. I'm very glad you're here. I think that'll be very nice working with you. I look forward to it. Wow, to me already. Um, I uh, I wanted to say welcome, and uh, um, hopefully uh, you're getting a chance to dig in and and uh, get used to our, our culture. I think every every um, board of education, every school district has their own culture, and uh, and that uh, that um, you have your way of. Uh, of, uh, of finding a, um, a feel for that, but also how to make us better and, and, and lead us uh, forward. Um, I like your leadership style on, and communication style. I'm, I'm seeing uh, the Friday letters. I, I think it goes out to the whole district um, and the phone calls and the accessibility. So I really look forward to having that uh, be very informative and great communication. All right, ditto for me. <laughs> Welcome, and I really look forward to working with you. Yeah, welcome. We're, we're really excited to have you here, and I'm, I'm sure you've had a whirlwind uh, two weeks between everything going on here, trying to find a place to live, and yes. <laughs> uh, we, we are really looking forward to having you in this community and, and taking the helm here. So I'll turn it over to Jerry. And <laughs> ditto on all that, and I just want the public to know and the rest of the board to know Mike and I met on his second hour <laughs> in the district for a good two hours uh, to kind of uh, set the stage for the community, et cetera, with him. Uh, some of our bigger uh, issues going forward, strategic issues, strategic needs. Um, you've seen some of the consequences. He's meeting with all of you. He's, um, he's meeting with me every two weeks. Not so much to deal with issues. Uh, you know, those will come. Uh, it's more, um, as we talked about when we visited the site, et cetera, and to Mike's credit, what he did in his district, it's more of a mentoring thing uh, uh, to culturalize him a little more to Midland and the district, et cetera, et cetera, and people around town. Uh, as we go forward. So he and I will be doing that uh, for an hour a day, or an hour every two weeks, I'm sorry. Uh, and hope we can stay to that schedule and avoid issue management and stay on the, on the mentoring side. So welcome, and uh, it's good to have you here. Well, thank you. And, and I certainly have enjoyed my two and a half weeks here. I've kind of found it rejuvenating, and I know that'll wear off quick, right? <laughs> new, as well as the, the honeymoon period, right? And so you need to get to work. Um, but obviously, in the beginning, uh, there is so much to learn about your organization. Um, but I think at my first Friday letter that you got the week later, because um, a little bit of communication. But um, the GPS is a great tool on my phone, and I'm, I, I don't really need it so much. I can find my way around town already. So that's a plus. <laughs> and I don't know if I asked as many questions to everyone here, but I need to be, continue to ask questions. And they're my GPS around the building. And so. And, and names are one of my weaknesses that I need to get better at. And I walk around the building and I've met everybody, but there's times I still think, geez, I really don't want to tell them I don't recall their name yet. So it's been a very interesting experience. And the housing has, is coming along. I think today we finally have um, come to the agreement that we can handle maybe two mortgages. We kind of panicked on the two mortgage thing and kind of backed off for a week. And now we're going to try to get that back going. And so um, we hope to be here completely moved in by middle of August, and that will make that transition to the start of the year much easier as well. So that's going well. Presently, it's kind of drive in on Monday and leave you guys on Friday, and that doesn't work real well either. So we're making that work. Um, the Friday letter, I think, is a great tool, and so we'll continue to do that. It goes to all cabinet members. I don't necessarily send it to okay. all staff. Um, a 
of thought, though, because I'm, I'm very open. I kind of follow up once we get ready to roll on, the, on our, my Monday. I do a superintendent's memo, and that goes to all staff as well as community and parents once we figure mm -hmm. out exactly how to do that in an organization four or five times larger than what I was doing it in. And so we've met with the tech people, and um, I think in a few weeks you'll start seeing that Monday communication go out as well to um, as many people as possible. And it, it'll cover some of the same things in the Friday letters, but not mm – -hmm obviously the depth and, and some of the mm -hmm. confidentiality pieces of it so um and some of the issues that jerry talked and i talked about as well as carl during the transmission trans um, transition was neola and and the midland schools works and so hopefully you understand that the conversation that it seems to have is um and i think angela you, you kind of touched base on it when i called you is is we need to get that document into one then begin to go through the pro final process of correcting it and making changes um, the way you're used to through committee to the board level but it, um, my understanding is the committee's been trying to do this for a few years possibly <laughs> and we haven't gotten there and so it's time to maybe just take those two documents and Greg Webster is coming on Friday and we're hoping he's able to do that we're not positive he's going to be able to do that because I'm not sure he really fully knows and I've been reading that how Midland's public schools works one of my reads and well, there's a lot of stuff in there and so it's going to be interesting how we bring those two pieces together but we are working on that and we'll give you more information as we go forward as well Bob Cooper had some information in there for you on the summer credit recovery e2020 uh, one of the big pieces is Spanish one and two being in there now it's been vetted through the proper pro processes and it's there as well I told you about my superintendent activities. Jerry gave me quite a list of people that I uh, ought to meet, and uh, as well as I'm going out and meeting all of the cabinet members, building principals, which are very important to me, very high on my list that I meet and communicate with them. Um, I'm about six of them in at this point, so I'm just beginning, and the conversations have been wonderful, and so I've really enjoyed that. Come out of those kind of uh, rejuvenated as well. I think anytime you walk into something new, you look for some wins. And, and uh, when I came to Midland Public Schools, one of the fears I had was, um, how do I take you guys to the next level, and what can I bring that may do that? Um, after talking to some of your building principals, it may, it's kind of relaxed me that maybe it's just me. I, I get to bring who I am and my personality and my style, and that may do that in itself. And so um, we'll see what that does as we go forward. But really good conversations at the building level as well. Again, looking into the enhancement millage and, and the millage failure in the, of the spring and some of the things we have to do there. And there's some work to do quickly on that enhancement millage. Um, and so I talked to John, I'll say his murderer's last name tonight, like I usually do, Surlis. Um, is that correct? <laughs> yes. And I met with John, and we had some talks about the enhancement millage. And I think we need to, I need to reach out to the other local superintendents as well. And we're not really scheduled to have a meeting to September, but I'm going to ask if they're willing to meet in August because I, um, this is – little higher priority timeline. Linda and I talked about today um, it, it, that May that it expires of 2014 is coming very quickly. So this is one we need to get moving on as well and have a discussion about. Um, I, I shared a couple nice letters with you. One from the Athletic Director State Association about one of your athletic directors who's doing a wonderful job and getting numerous extra training. Um, today I'm going to share with you, a, if you missed the article in the Midland Daily News, I hope most of you didn't, but some of your Dow students had a, had a great performance in math. And so the quick, real briefly the article said, this spring a group of Dow High School math students traveled to Saginaw Valley State University Math Olympics. Dow High teams placed first in both Level 1 and Level 2 competitions, making Dow High the overall team champion for the eighth year in a row. So that was pretty impressive. and. Um, it's kind of been my practice, Cindy and I'll send something off to uh, these kids tomorrow, congratulating them as well if there's a sponsor there. And just a nice elbow piece that they like, like to get from, from me. Unless, unless there's other questions, that's what I have to report tonight. Thank you. Any other business anybody wants to conduct for the evening? Seeing none, we are adjourned.